Hurry up with that bomb! And where is that girl? Find her and bring her to me. Got good aim with a rack of beef? Then get creative with your weapons. Hurl anything that's not nailed down at the no-good pirates who've kidnapped the president's daughter. This ain't no clean fight. Now, as ridiculous as that sounds, that is the premise for our game that we're talking about today, which is Dynamite Cop on the Sega Dreamcast. The storyline to Dynamite Cop is about as plain and cliched as it gets. It's super cheesy, and basically, according to the instruction manual, the entire purpose of the game is to rescue the president's daughter from pirates. All of this is revealed to you within the course of the game through some ridiculous and overdramatic cutscenes. The game itself is your typical multi-plane beat-em-up. The player gets to choose between three characters at the start of the game, which are Bruno, Gene, and Eddie. Just like the back of the box says, you can pretty much use anything in the game as a weapon from pepper shakers to giant steaks to bread rolls to anything you can get your hands on to take out an enemy. You'll notice that underneath your life bar is a little power meter with about five spots for power-ups, and as you pick these up through the game, it basically takes you into like a rage mode where all of your combos do about twice as much damage and have way more hits. Dynamite Cop also has a whole bunch of quick time events where, depending on the scenario, you might have to hit a direction at a certain time, a punch, a kick, or a jump to make your way to the next part of the level. On top of just the game itself, it also has a gallery mode where you'll find these pictures and portraits throughout the game that get added to it, and even a bonus game, which is Tranquilizer Gun, which apparently is an old arcade port of a 1980s Sega arcade game. What's kind of funny to notice is that clothes actually come off your character with damage or when they take a lot of hits, and when you heal or pick up a heal item, it's miraculously back again. The difficulty is not really that bad in the game, being that it's so short, but the AI can be really annoying sometimes, especially when you're trying to pick up an item, since it takes you a couple seconds to pick something up. If you're trying to pick something up against a guy that's using the gun, good luck, because they're just going to shoot you every single time you try and grab it. The graphics in Dynamite Cop are pretty simple, uh, not overly impressive as far as the Dreamcast standard goes, uh, but they are smooth and there's really no load times whatsoever to speak of. Everything is pretty bright and colorful, it's very arcade looking, and there's lots going on at all times and you'll never even notice any sort of frame rate drop, which is pretty impressive. As far as the sound goes in Dynamite Cop, it's pretty decent. Uh, the music is pretty good, but what makes it stand out is that it's so overdramatic, which I think makes it a lot funnier. The sound effects are pretty solid. I like the sounds of the, uh, of the punch attacks, the, the kick attacks, and of course, all the different sounds that items make when colliding with one of your opponent's faces. And the voice acting in the game, for the cutscenes at least, is super cheesy. But you can't help but think that they purposely did it that way. This whole game kind of fits that style. So there you are. I've been expecting you. I have changed my body to destroy you. Another noteworthy feature of the Dreamcast version of Dynamite Cop is with the VMU. The visual memory unit will actually beep in the controller when you're near a hidden item. And the closer you are to it, the more it'll beep until you eventually find it and pick it up. Dynamite Cop on the Dreamcast is a ton of fun. It's so cheesy that it's absolutely brilliant. It's lots of fun single player and even double the amount of fun with a friend. <laughs> 